Hi, this is Scott Washi again. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to export your skeletal meshes and your animation files from Maya 2009 for Unreal Tournament 3. So, in case you want to use this for a custom mod or custom map name, machinima type thing, then this is what you'll be looking at. Alright, so what we have here is animation that I did for the spider and first things first um, you just want to make sure everything's triangulated uh, Unreal uh, only takes triangulated uh, polygons so just real quick make sure everything's triangulated and what you'll do is you know make sure you have the animation the way you want it and then in the mail script area, you'll type in axe main. This will bring up the actor X uh, program that, in case you need to learn how to install that, I have a video for that as well. Um, so, what you're going to do now is up on the top, you'll browse which folder you want to have the files saved to. Um, I just saved it to the desktop, but you know, you can save where you want to. Now the mesh file name is the file name for the skeletal mesh you want to give them. And so for the spider, I'm just going to call this Mechanical Widow. Because uh, that was the name for it in the mod. Um, all you got to do then is hit save mesh. And then it will give you a note about how many unsmooth groups processed it did. Um, and then as long as it says skin file in the name written, you're okay. Um, now if you want, you can come down, make sure it's here on your desktop or wherever you saved it to. So the skeletal mesh is that .psk file and it also gives you a text file where it'll basically have irrelevant information that you won't even never use. Um, but, you know, you can save it just in case, or you can delete it, it won't matter. Um, the PSK is what really matters. So, I, I'll bring up the ActorX menu again. Uh, important thing to remember is, if you close it, then that information doesn't go away or anything. It all stays there, no matter what. As long as you have Maya still open, it'll retain that information, which is really nice. So, um, a point about exporting skeletal meshes is you don't have to do that for every single animation file what that means is you can like rig a character then send that to multiple people to animate and then you could only just export the mess once and as long as none of the bones are changed or renamed or the mesh and UV stay the same then importing the animations from other people's files will work just as fine or even different file names so I could have the I could have the uh, rig rig file and then I could have different animation files for like a walk or an idle or whatnot and I could export those just fine without having to export the mesh from those specific walk or idle or run files Alright, with that in mind, now is the time to create the PSA, the, the animation package. So, what you want to do is name the animation file name. So, what I usually do is just name it the same name as the mesh, the skeletal mesh name with underscore anims, um, just, just to keep everything nice and easy. Um, important thing to remember Unreal doesn't really like spaces so if all possible try to avoid spaces and do like underscores or just camel case like with this right here um, just it doesn't like spaces for, us for some reason you want to also avoid that in naming of your skeletal rig um, alright so uh, what you'll want to do now is name the animation sequence name so for this I'll just name it walk because it's a walk and then for the animation range you want to put the keyframes at which it runs so mine runs from 1 to 
58. Uh, so what you want to do, this since this is a cycle animation, what you want to do is just take off that last keyframe. So I'll run it from just 1 to 57, because 1 and 58 are the same exact keyframes for me. Um, so if you have both 1 and 58 in the in the animation range, then it'll do a little stutter at the very end, which you don't want for a, for a cycle at all. Um, so all you do after you get the name, the sequence name and animation range in, is just hit digest animation, and it'll play the animation. And then it'll tell you how many frames are set and how many uh, keys, and it's good. What you'll want to do now is you can either quick save it and it'll quick save your file, or you could go to the animation manager, which I recommend because it allows you to edit it a little bit better. Uh, so when you do go to the animation manager, it'll bring up the animations that you've currently exported while Maya is open and running and how many are in the package. So from here basically you could uh, you know select and delete um, different animations also you could select and see which um, the information of everything. And you could do that for the out package, output package as well once we have stuff in there. Um, you could also load a package so if you want to update a PSA that you already created before, you just go to load um, or load as, whichever. And then when you finally want to save it, just go to save. Uh, and it'll save it as your file name that you named it before here. So um, to get animations that you've exported into the output package, all you got to do is select them and hit move with the arrow key going that way. Um, if you want to take out animations from the package, you could just select them over here and then hit the arrow key that way. Um, you can also just copy it, which will leave your animations in Unreal as well, just in case you want to open them up and mess, them, mess with them further. Um, and that's basically the gist of it. So once you have all the files in your output package, you just go save and then it'll save it as the file name where you told it to save it before um, so presumably if we close this then we should have the PSA Yep, on my desktop right here um, basically the same thing as the PSK um, but <clears throat> it's the animation files so these both these files are really really small in size um, we're talking kilobytes because um, it's just really, really small information. Um, when you when you do um, import these eventually into Unreal, when you um, when you want to do updates and stuff to the files in the game, let's say for instance you want to change the walk cycle because you uh, miss something or you just haven't updated better version. You could name it exactly the same as you did the the previous file or the previous uh, sequence name, and then when you import it into Unreal as an as a new PSA, then it'll just overwrite the existing cycle. Um, so if we had an old walk named Walk, and we wanted to replace it, we could just call the new walk cycle Walk as well and then we could save out a new animation file um, package, a PSA, and then when we go to import it in Unreal it will overwrite it, uh, which is a lot easier than just editing the PSAs. Um, another important thing to note is on animation range you could set it to go backwards which is pretty cool. So if we wanted to do a backwards walk we could just put the animation file range from 57 to 1 and then it'll play everything backwards so this is pretty handy uh, if you don't want to do an additional animation that just plays in the opposite direction um, so you just do the same thing and then it just goes reverse wise and now I have walk and a backwards walk 
so I could copy that over there. Um, and if I hit save, it'll overwrite the previous uh, PSA that I created. So if we go down here, you see it now it has walk and backwards walk. Um, then I guess the notes are pretty handy, as it'll tell you which uh, animations uh, sequences are in which uh, PSA. So if you want to hold on to that for that reason, that's good as well. Um, and that is basically it. Um, there's really not much to it. It's pretty simple. And yeah, uh, thanks. Have a good day.